Hi guys, welcome to your second main topic for our remote learning. We're going to concentrate this particular block on skills and we're going to look at motor skills and how we can classify those skills. And a motor skill is something that we use in sport. We're not talking about skills as in being a good artist or being a cook or a chef. We're talking about skills that we use in sport. And we all can think of examples of what looks skillful and what is skillful to something that looks like a little bit of a fluke or a little bit of a fumble. So we're going to think about what a skill actually is, okay? We're going to look at whether the skill is predetermined. So that means that if we plan to do it, then it becomes a skill. If we don't plan on sticking one in the top corner and it just flukily goes in there, then that's not, right, not really a skill, even though something's come off. So it's got to be predetermined. Okay? It's got to be efficient in terms of our energy, so we don't expend a lot of energy whilst we do it, but then also it's got to look good. Okay? So three things. It's got to be predetermined, which means we can plan it. It's got to be efficient in terms of our energy, and it's got to look good. And if we can do all of those three things, then that means that skill can be repeatable. Okay? In a second, I'll show you an example of what we call a closed skill. Okay? And a closed skill is a skill that we can repeat when everything in the environment stays constant, okay? So as you can see behind me, we have a basketball hoop. The basketball hoop always stays the same side. If a basketball has a, a free throw, the distance between the throw and the hoop is always the same distance. The basketball ball is always the same size. So if we were to throw the ball into the hoop from that distance, that is what we call a closed skill because the environment is always the same, okay? That way you can repeat it over and over and over again. If we plan to put it where we want to put it, if it's efficient in terms of our energy, if it looks good and we can repeat it, then it becomes a skill. And this one is a closed skill, okay? So we'll show you an example now. Mr. Rashim has to sink two in two because he's got good motor skills, he's predetermined, it's planned and he can repeat it. Okay, so here's an example of closed skill. Okay, so we've just spoken about what we call a closed skill, and you've seen Mr. Rashi do his basketball free throw. As you can see, we've put the free throw right at the very edge of that continuum, which means it's an extreme closed skill. There's nobody putting Mr. Rashi off, the distance between the hoop and Mr. Ash is the same, the hoop is the same size, and we have no weather or other conditions that we need to worry about, okay? But let's think about another skill that's, that's relatively similar, and let's think about maybe a badminton serve. A badminton serve, in terms of the skill, is the same skill all the time. The environment that we're playing in is roughly the same as the basketball, where there's no weather or wind to contend with, however, with the badminton serve, you're serving to an opponent. So where your, where your opponent is in that opposite serving box, that may depend on how you actually serve. So in this, in this instance, the badminton serve wouldn't be as far along as the free throw on the continuum. It may be somewhere around here because you have something to contend with. Okay, So it is the same skill all the time, but there's something we've got to contend with is actually the opponent on the opposite side. Okay? And we'll show you an example in a second where we're actually going to go outside and we'll find that the more environmental aspects we've got to contend with, the further along this continuum the skill goes and we start going into what we would call an open skill. Right, now we've already spoken about closed skills and we've given you an example of what we call an extreme closed skill, which would be a, ba a basketball free throw. We've compared that to a badminton serve where you've got something in the environment that may change, like the opponent and where they're stood in the serving box. We've also shown you an example of a free kick in football where even further along the continuum, because we've got more aspects in the environment that we need to take into consideration. Things like the wind, things like the weather, things like the wall or how far away you are. All of those things have got to be considered even though the actual skill of kicking the ball is constant. And that's why it's still an open skill but not quite far along to the extreme side. So what we've got now is the opposite of a closed skill and we've got an open skill. An open skill is the opposite of closed skill which means that the environment is always changing. The person who's in charge of the skill 
would always be adapting to the surroundings. So let's take an example of a centre in netball. When a centre in netball catches the ball, they've got to then quickly land appropriately, they've got to have the head up, looking round for a teammate, and those teammates are obviously being marked by an opponent. So they've got to quickly change their mind on what they might do, do something else, and it's all dependent on what the environment is. And who they choose to pass to may be different every single time, because the environment they're in is constantly changing. Okay? Another example maybe would be a rugby player when they catch the ball. If they're one-on-one -on -one with an opponent, this situation is not always the same. I might sidestep and go one way, throw a dummy, or just charge over them. So all of these things, the environment is constantly changing and the performer has got to constantly adapt. Okay, so we've just had a look at uh, some examples of the open skills and we've placed them here onto our continuum. So just a, bit of, a little bit of a recap, we've obviously got the close skills down here, free throw being the most extreme, go up from, to badminton serve, and then a free kick. We then go down to the open extreme, and the reason why we've placed the rugby carry and the netball centre at different, uh, sort of different points of the continuum is because if you think about the environment that a netball player is in, the netball player can't move, it's obviously on a hard court. Sometimes it is played indoors. And then we've got a rugby carry, which they've got to take into consideration. Because they're moving with the ball, and maybe relying on a little bit of agility to go past somebody, or some power to get over somebody, it will depend on the opponent, and it may also depend on the surface they're playing on. So because there are more environmental factors to consider with this rugby carry, and because that's it, both situations are always changing, that's why we place the rugby carry further along the extreme towards open, okay? So we have closed skill and open skill. And the name for this continuum is called the environmental continuum. And we place skills on the environmental continuum all because of the environmental factors that we've got to consider and whether the skill is constant, which is closed, or open and always changing. And that's why we have open versus closed. Okay, so there's no workout for this particular lesson like we have done previously. We've gone over all the information you need to know on the environmental continuum. I recommend you watch this video twice, even if you just want to see mine and Mr. Rash's free kicks go to the top corner for a second time, why not? Um, and obviously you've got an assignment to do. Good luck, any questions, get in contact with your teacher via Teams.